So for a winning CV, based on my experiences, I see these three factors as what really determines a good CV from a bad CV. And the first one is how well you have developed yourself as a person. So there's your skill set, the skills you possess, the experiences you you built for yourself will determine if you will have a very good CV or a bad CV. Um, the next one, and but I'll be talking about um, some of these things and how to develop yourself and all that. Um, as I talk about the do's and the don'ts in CV writing. The next thing that also talks, um, that defines a good CV or a bad CV is how you organize the test, your layout and your formatting. It goes a long way to determine whether you are going to have a very good CV or a bad one. If you don't do a well organized or don't use a well, a good layout, and do proper or appropriate formatting, regardless of how ex your experiences and your skill sets are, you will still not be able to produce a winning CV or a good CV. Now, the third one is about grammar, your spelling and your punctuation. A CV is a brief document. Yesterday I mentioned about it being two pages, three pages, or even for a resume, one page or at most two pages. Now, it tells a lot if you still find spelling mistakes, uh, typos, and punctuation errors on your CV. If those things are present, then it will still portray you as someone who doesn't pay attention to details. And that one will not give you a good CV. And so for a good CV, it's more about the skills you possess as a person. Also, it's also about your organization, your layout, and your grammar, spelling, and punctuation. Before I move on to talk about the tips, let me quickly uh, try and fetch my CV. Yesterday, I promised to show you how to outline certain things and how to uh, cite with my CV. Let's stop. Please, I'm fetching my CV so that I show you what I'm talking about even before I talk about the do's and the don'ts. Good. So, in a few minutes, you should have my. My TV is playing. Some of you, your your microphones are on. I suggest you mute your microphones. Yes. So um on the screen is is my CV. And I'm talking about a good layout organization and all the stuff. Um, I'm not showing you the entire CV. There are some important things I want you to look at because that is what we often miss. First of all is the personal skills. So yesterday I mentioned that for a CV, do not just list your skills as a good organizational skills, good communication skills, um, computer skills, computer literate and all that. So if you are mentioning computer skills, talk about the kind of things you can do with the computer. Um, the sort of things you can do with the computer and then give further details as I have done on my CV. And you can see it is, the layout is clear in such a way that Everything is distinct. You don't need to struggle to, to read the things on my, on my CV. And that is what we are talking about, what makes a winning CV. You should have a very good layout, very well spaced, such a way that you don't have to struggle to read. And so this is one of the things I, want, I intend to show you, the skills, so that when you are writing your skills, 
Now that the network is the network is back, you're also telling me I have 10 more minutes. Don't worry, that one will just reconnect. All right. The next thing you should also see is the leadership. Um, for the leadership yesterday, I showed it to you and I mentioned that. Um, Abdullah, Abdullah, your hand is up. Yes, you are not seeing your CV. You are not seeing uh, my CV. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you are not seeing. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Are you the only person not seeing my CV? I, I don't know. But as for me, that I can't say, I don't know the rest. Uh, no, no, no. He's not the only one. Oh, okay. here, oh, okay. you we can't see your CV. Oh, I see. I think we should do screen, share screen then. No, yeah, share yeah. it so, Please, a bit. Yes, I I hope you can now see. Yeah, you can. You now, can you now see? Okay. Yes, can you see it now? Okay, now I can see it. Can yes. See it. yes, okay. Yeah, I can see it now. I was talking about the personal skills. Yeah, I can. Yeah. And I was emphasizing on the fact that you not just mentioned that you have good organizational skills. It does not mean anything. You can go ahead and do some further details as to how you acquired your organizational skills. If you are talking about research and data analysis skills, what is it that you can do in research? You understand? And the layout should be very clear and very distinct, such that you don't need to struggle to, to read. Very well spaced out, um, like that. So that's what I, I was talking about. Then yesterday I showed you about the leadership experience. I mentioned that if you tend to have a number of leadership experiences, then if you begin to add your achievements and accomplishments, your CV will tend to be voluminous, very lengthy. But if you have just about two, three leadership experiences, you need to add at least one line to tell what you do or your achievements. I also promised you that I'll show you course certificates. Certificate, uh, the courses that you have taken outside, outside your normal classroom, how to list them. Now, what is important on the certificate is the title of the course or the name of the course. Now, who ran the course for you? And so the name of the person um, rendering the course should also be spelled out and also the period. Sometimes if you have more space, you can talk about some of the measures or some of the key elements that you, you learned under that. And so if you go through my CV, you can see a number of course certificates that I have taken. Now, this is a bulk document, a bulk CV. And if someone asks me to submit my CV, I don't just go and let this, thing, this entire thing to the person. It depends on what I'm using my CV for. For instance, if I want to apply for something that is related to my profession or optometry, something with I, then this graphic design thing here wouldn't do anything to that certificate. And so this one will go off. Introduction to personal branding will go off. But as we get here, you can see there's something about introduction to cataract, cataract surgery. And so something like this, would be relevant to an optometry application, something related to my profession. The same way, if I'm applying for something like leadership or like a scholarship that is based on community work, then um, a course certificate like community organizing for action will be relevant, you understand? Something that is related with career, a course like this would, would be more important. And so in as much as we have all this listed, it does not mean that you take everything off like that, and then you show it to, uh, you submit it for any application. So depending on the application, you have to modify it. You don't need to carry everything to whoever is reading your CV or your employer. Now, these are conferences and seminars. For conferences and seminars, you need to mention the name of the conference or the seminar. The one we are having is called CV Writing Masterclass. So if you finish and you want to cite CV Writing Masterclass, it should begin CV Writing Masterclass by 
you see this is the organization rendering here this one is about a zone network you can add a otc training as well then it should state the dates which you you attended this sem these seminars and these are what is required for you to reference a seminar or a conference that you you attended not something here that is also in chronology you see this one was in june 2020 as you come down you see october 2016 you see another 2016 here and as you go down you come and see 2015 so you do not start with the 2015 and scroll down to 2020 so make sure it is in chronology the latest one or the current one then you proceed to the the latter ones now these are community and voluntary works so i'll be talking about how to highlight certain things if you look at the community and voluntary works just at a glance of the cv you see that this i was a speaker then it mentions the summit for which you spoke by which organization at where venue so you give information about what you actually did the community thing that you you did and you should highlight the significant things or the relevant things so that by just looking at it you are able to uh, know that this person is a speaker a mentor a volunteer optometrist a resource person and all that even without looking at the data details she able to pick out my community works that my community works involves speaking it involves going on uh, outreaches to look at people's eyes but at a glance unless you want details that is when you, you look out for the details now i have to mention that this is also in chronology 2021 you come down to 2016 you come down to 2019 sorry this one you see 2016 because it is it says since 2016 it means that you are still doing it and that is why it's like that you come to 2019 you come to 2018 2018 2018 so in chronology like that that is very very important then highlight your roles so that at a glance someone will be able to know your the community and your volunteer works that you have been you are you are into now publications i know those of you in tertiary by now you should know how to cite we have different citations different referencing formats and so be specific and then use a particular a consistent formatting um whether you are using i've forgotten them aps those kind of stuff if whatever apa sorry apa if you are using APA style, make sure you are using APA through, throughout, and then you list your publications. You can mention some about your interest, your referees. But look at the format. This is a CV that you don't need to struggle to look at the terms on it. And that is what I wanted to, to show you. And um, before I even, want, I even go on to talk about what I have for you this evening. So please, let's go back to our winning CV. Good. Yes. Let's go back to. Please do. Do you now see the slides? Yes, doc. All yes, right. Yes, doc. Yes. So if you see the slide, then let's look at the tips for you to produce the winning CV. I mentioned about layout, a good layout and organization for you to produce a winning CV. Now, your CV for it to be a winning one must be visually appealing. When you look at it and it's it's not nice, you'll not be prompted or you'll not be tempted to even read for the details. And so by just looking at your CV, it should be very presentable, it should be nice. You get it? So that people will be encouraged to look at um, what you have there. Now, for it to be nice, you need to bold certain relevant things on it. For instance, yesterday I mentioned that if you are writing your experiences, if you are an intern at a laboratory, you need to board in it. But some of you overdo it so that they will start boarding everything on the CV. Now, if you overdo the boarding and then the italics on the CV, it will not look nice. So please be moderate. It's not everything you board. Board things that will stand out and which will add to your CV. If you are boarding anything that will not bring anything to your CV, please do not board it. It will not be relevant. Now, you should have a lot of white space. Because you shouldn't write plenty things on your CV if you are, you are using a black and a, the black and white format, right? So if you have a lot of writings, you will see a lot of dark things on your CV, and people will not be prompted to read. And so you have a